when we're wrong, we say it. And I said that I thought Masvidal um, had a chance, and he did, as it turned out. So I was wrong. I was wrong. And um, funny thing, I thought that if Masvidal could avoid the takedowns and stay on his feet, you know, because Usman is so strong and such a great, you know, grappler, wrestler, everything that is part of being so great down on the mat, I thought he'd have a chance. And I didn't realize how much Usman's striking. And part of that goes to Trevor Whitman, too, speaking of him. Yep. But I, 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 I didn't realize how much Usman's striking had improved. And more important than me not knowing, and here's the key for me breaking this fight down, very important, either did Masvidal. And he stated such. No excuse. He wasn't making an excuse. I'm not making an excuse. It's a fact that that went into... The ups, uh, that went into the performance here and how Usman was so dominant that Madvidal wasn't expecting him to be that good. I know you're supposed to, I get it, but I'm just making a fact here. Again, no excuse. Usman did what he did and he was great. But Madvidal, as Teddy Atlas, I didn't think that Usman had improved that much. On the, on the striking end of it. And more importantly, like I said, Masvidal didn't either. And he said it. He said it in the interview afterwards. And here's the funny thing. The first fight that he took on six days notice, Masvidal with him, it hurt him. I'll tell you how it hurt him. I thought it could help him that he'd say, hey, if I could do that well and survive, I know was, he, he got dominated, but he survived with no preparation. Hey, I got a chance to win this damn thing. But here's the kicker. In that fight, it was all about strength, physicality, getting in close, getting pinned against the fence, getting taken down, trying to get back to your feet, avoiding takedowns. It was all about the inside game, the mat game. And in the mind of Masvidal, that did not help him. That set him up. We talk about setting guys up like how beautifully Rose set up Wiley by boxing, moving, and then bang, a kick, you know, set her up. Well, that first fight set up, it did. It set up Masvidal in a way that his mind was, he said it. He said, in camp I did more training on the floor and wrestling and grappling than I ever did before. Ever did before. Like he almost took the striking for granted. I don't got to worry about the striking. Well, you're damn wrong. You're damn wrong. You have to worry about that. But again, he was, because of the first experience being all about physicality and about getting taken to the mat and avoiding being taken to the mat, he concentrated on that fight. And he kind of took for granted, I'm better than him striking. I already got that in the bag. You know, not that he didn't practice that. Reminded me a little bit of um, Conor McGregor and um, Dustin Poirier. It didn't look like Conor was expecting Dustin to come out and start cracking him with leg kicks and head shots. Good point. Good point. And, and you know, Ken, again... He Masvidal said it. This isn't just Teddy Atlas saying it with my instincts and my judgment and fighting and my experience. No, or my eye that I noticed that. No, this is Masvidal telling you. But I understand it. I understand it because I was thinking too that was that Masvidal had a chance in the striking here, but as it turned out, uh, he couldn't dominate in the striking because this other guy was his game was now at a level where he wouldn't allow that to be done and because he had improved in that area so much and i want to also mention that it reminded me in the way that usman has improved his striking game first of all he's so strong he's he's so prepared he's so good on the mat that now with an improved striking game he's going to be an awful difficult guy to match up with you know, to because when you match up with someone, you're always looking for some kind of weakness, something where you could take, uh, okay, you could take homage and saying, you could take, you know, you could, uh, you take confidence in saying, okay, look, I can't beat him on a floor on a mat. I get it, I know that, so I'll avoid that. But I could beat him over here. I could do this. I could do that. But 
with the way he's improved striking now, he's kind of taken those. <laughs> he, he, he's taking those outlets away from you, from your thinking that those could be places where you could take them that, you know, you can have an advantage. And it reminds me a little bit of the great, great Khabib before he retired where we already knew what a monster and what a master he was on the mat. Um, but he was improving almost subtly in his striking game that I don't think he got enough credit for. But in his last fight, Ken, I remember where I was thinking, well, he's fighting a guy who's a good wrestler and a superior striker, and maybe it could be interesting. And then as the fight progressed, I said, wait a minute. Khabib, the guy who's the monster in wrestling on the floor and grappling, all that stuff, he, he's out jabbing this guy. All of a sudden, I saw a jab that I hadn't really seen, a consistent, accurate, well-timed, well-thrown jab by Khabib. And I said, wow, wow. He's added that to already his brilliant game where now even if he don't even if he's not better than a striker, maybe a great striker, he's good enough to nullify the striker's game where the striker can't get his way, where he can stabilize the striker with a good jab. He can he can control certain Parts of the geography, as I talk about, that he needs to control with the striking game. You know, he can he can offset uh, the striking game by using a well placed jab uh, and and being balanced and being in position where he throws his punches. He's not giving up defense and he's in position to also eat with the right hand after the jab because he his striking has improved. So as I thought about Usman, I thought about Khabib, I said, yeah, he's done the same thing Khabib did at the late part of his, you know, before he retired, where he's improved in those areas, and it's going to be very, very hard now to deal with him, and the execution of that knockout punch, Ken, when you get a knockout that clean, it's almost always because you land a blind punch, and it almost always because you had, you had a trick, something with it to to allow it to be blind. It wasn't just a naked punch. It wasn't just a, a forceful punch, a powerful punch. We know he's got power. and But it was more than that. It was the execution. It was the delivery system, as I talk about. The trickery, you know, the IQ, where Usman threw purposely a little wider jab just to bring the eyes of Masvidal over to his right side, just to distract him a little bit, to move his eyes a little bit. He threw the left hand in that lane, not straight, not in the middle of the highway, but with more on the shoulder of the road. He threw it on the side a little, and then the right hand comes down the middle, down the pike, down the highway, and he never sees it, and it knocks him cold. Um, brilliantly done brilliantly done and and I, I won't even let go of it there where when he drew that left hand on the side at the same time simultaneously he be an Usman grabbed the right hand grabbed the right hand of Masvidal and pulled it down that distracted him more that caused a reaction it caused it was the catalyst for a reaction that caused his eyes to blink yeah, I know I'm going deep, but look at the video. You're going to see it. Believe me, there was a lot that went into it more than just the final blow where he could land a clean, blind punch, a punch that he wasn't going to recover from, no matter how good his chin was, where it caused Masvidal's eyes to blink, to, to almost close by doing that, and then never able to see, as I said, the right hand. And also, Usman showed that his physical strength, that that great physical strength that he has, that we see on the f mat, in the grappling, in the wrestling, it translated into punching power. That he, he was able to take that same power. It's not always the case. He was able to take that same power that he showed physically on the mat and translate it into a punch where... The guy's a hell of a puncher. He's a great puncher. 
I just want to see in my notes if I'm leaving anything out. One thing that I was, uh, the only thing I was right about, you know, I'm, I'm, I make sure that at the beginning I was quick to say where I was wrong, thinking that Masvidal had a chance and he didn't under the circumstances. But the one thing that I was right about, I said and I tweeted it uh, before the fight, look for Usman's strong, accurate jab to set the table as he he'll then go to eat with the right hand. That I was right about because I knew that Usman in his prior fight had been working on the striking game. I didn't know how much it had come uh, in, you know, in terms of improvement that it came to this so far f- forward to this, this place, but I knew it had been improving because I had seen it in his prior fight to jab, a good jab. And so I knew that that would be part of the thinking of Whitman and Usman in setting up the fight plan that Masvidal is going to look to strike. He's going to look to box on the outside. And what's the best way to stabilize a guy who's looking to box? Use your jab. Use your jab the right way where you can, you can get him out of his rhythm. You can discombobulate the guy where you can... You can stabilize him, control him a little bit, break him up a little bit where he can't get into his boxing rhythm. And so I figured that would be part of the scheme, part of the thinking for the team of Usman. And it turned out it was. And boy, talk about using your left hand, as I always say, Ken, you know, set the table with the left so you could eat with the right. He, he, he didn't show good table manners. He devoured them. I mean, it was, you know what I mean? You talk about, I, I know my mother used to say, small bites, please. <laughs> you know, small small bites, but, but he took a big bite there. 